Vance, and good morning, family. Uh, welcome to the beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And if you are joining us on the World Wide Web or in consciousness, wherever you are across the face of the globe, I wish you were here. And I know that your consciousness is uplifting us to higher and higher octaves of pure love and beingness. Let us all say together, I am alive, awake, aware. I am alive, awake, I'm not convinced. I'm alive, awake, aware. Happy, healthy, and enthusiastic. Now, so let me see if you can do it all together. I'm alive, awake, aware, happy, healthy, and enthusiastic. I'm alive, awake, aware, happy, healthy, and enthusiastic. And if you really believe it, say yay! Now, pre this. <laughs> You know, I love the way language evolves. And I was just listening to the uh, BBC on the way to church this morning, and there was a woman who, an author in England, um, who has written a book. She was, she's a Jewish um, writer, and she was writing about the programs in Europe and what have you. And she was talking about the way um, the Jews have a kind of patwa, they call it Yiddish, and it bears no resemblance to, to Hebrew. And, you know, they, uh, when they got to New York, the Jews in the diaspora, you know, spoke this strange patois. I said, boy, they should come to Jamaica and hear what we do with language, you know. I love the way our own Rastafarian brothers and sisters um, use words, they coin words that make more sense than the, the standard English word. One of my favorites is, um, I overstand you. <laughs> because nobody should understand a Rasta man. You shouldn't stand under anybody. You should always overstand. Um, and that makes sense, doesn't it? And the other one that I love is appreciate love. Me appreciate love because you don't want to appreciate anybody. <laughs> we, we're not hate, we love. So we don't appreciate, we appreciate love. <laughs> but I heard a new one this past week. Um, from the man in black, uh, Dr. Orvin Taylor, <laughs> um, on the radio. And it, I had to, uh, um, to talk about it this morning because I've actually um, titled my encouragement after uh, what he said. Orville Taylor was thanking uh, the Rastafarian Boba Shanti Rastas of St. Thomas, the parish of St. Thomas, for allowing him to full participate in a ceremony they were having. Don't you love that? Full dissipate. You get it? You say they didn't want him to be only partially involved in the event. For, for it to have real meaning for him and for his Rastafarian hosts, he would have to be wholeheartedly present in and completely committed to what they were celebrating. And so I have titled this morning's encouragement, full participation, the key to a thriving ministry. You see, friends, I, Vance just invited you for Saturday, this Saturday, June 9th, um, here to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in Kingston at 10 o'clock, and we're going to make it 10 till 1 o'clock and then give you some soup. Um, it's not going to be any long water, not the soup, the, the, the workshop. Um, but it is our part two of the Thriving Ministry Initiative. And as you know, the TMI involves our thrust to create a mission-centric ministry, a, a ministry that is centered around our mission. And you know, we sing that temple song, which has really taken off. We are a people with a vision, one with spirit on a mission. To do what? To touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate anyone who comes into contact with us anytime, when? Night or day. That's the mission. And that mission cannot be pursued by one, two, three, four ministers and a handful of licensed practitioners. Everybody who attends this church and who practices the teaching that we learn here is actually a practitioner of the science of mind. And the Thriving Ministry Initiative has to involve every single person 
who feels that they have benefited in some way and that this teaching has in some way touched their lives so that, you know, friends, when we go out into the public and our neighbors see the way we live and the way we, we carry ourselves and how we relate to other human beings, they think, yeah, he or she has something and I want to know what it is. So that's how we carry this ministry out beyond the four walls of the temple to make it a ministry, a church, that is truly without borders. So if you have ever wanted to make a difference in your world and sometimes you, know, you feel that the issues are too enormous for you one, um, for you to have any meaningful impact, you need to be here on Saturday and you need to come prepared to participate <laughs> to the max. You see, our thriving ministry really is where it's at in terms of creating a world. Let's just start with our own, our own backyard, creating a Jamaica that works for everyone, and then taking that beyond our shores to the Caribbean and beyond that to the entire world, and centers for spiritual living all across the, um, the world, particularly in North America, but as far away as Europe as well, are committing themselves to the diligent pursuit of this, this vision we have of awakening humanity to its spiritual magnificence. What a wonderful, a wonderful thought that is. A mission that, that touches, heals, blesses, prospers, loves and liberates everyone. But for it to touch them, they have to be awake. The Bible gives the answer to increasing that awakeness and that, that awareness and talks about self-reliance in Hebrews 11 verse 6, which reads, For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So friends, throughout the ages, the men and women who possess spiritual vision and spiritual self-reliance have all possessed a deep of abiding conviction, I'll call it a conviction, that they were one with the God presence. And that God presence they knew was within them, and they were sure of this. They didn't demonstrate the slightest arrogance or self-righteousness. They simply went all out to fully participate, to fully pursue their vision of a better world, a more, a more a gentler world, a more beautiful world, a more peaceful world, whatever it is. I think of Moses and Buddha and Muhammad. I think of the beautiful Jesus. And in more modern times, I think of Martin Luther King Jr. I think of our own Marcus Garvey. I think of lots of visionaries, our own Reverend Dr. Elmer Lumsden, who, who founded this church. And these people, they didn't even think about the hardships or the obstacles or, or what was involved. They were committed to being completely involved in something that they knew was good and was worth their effort and their energy and their love and their time and their passion. I often speak you know, of, a, of a highly successful insurance agent who I knew and who really Im impressed me from a very early age. And he told me many years ago that the real secret of his success was that he made a habit at all times and under all circumstances, even when his world seemed to be spinning out of control, to affirm silently, and I quote, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. It's from Psalm 138, verse 8. Let us say it together. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Together. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. In a half voice. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. In a whisper. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Now say it in your heart. And so it is. To the mind of my insurance um, agent friend, everything would turn out fine, regardless of appearances. And that is, of course, exactly what his experience was. Because we know in this teaching, whatever you give your attention to becomes your experience. 
So he was never perturbed when a prospective large sale fell through or if another insurance company got the big contract because he deeply believed that everything in his experience was for his greater good and would ultimately prove to be good. Why? Because he deeply believed that God is good. And this was his secret. And I believe it is the secret of all super successful people, no matter what their concept of God may be. Um, they have this, this abiding, deep, deep assurance within themselves that they are destined to succeed. So friends, our deeply held beliefs are outpictured in every area and in all domains of, of, of your life. Your physical body manifests your beliefs. Your deep-seated beliefs show up in your relationships with people. They color your business and professional life, and they affect your finances. In short, what you believe is made manifest in everything you touch and in everything that pertains to you. That's awesome, you know, because it means that you have the say-so about what happens in your life. So your present condition and life circumstances are an exact, precise, mathematical reflection of your habitual thought patterns and subconscious acceptances. And it's the subconscious acceptances that sometimes worry me. And so I, I very often affirm whatever is not in alignment with love, which of course is the highest vibration in the universe, whatever within me is not in alignment with that high octave of divine love is banished into nothingness because love heals everything. And if we just hold firm to that, if you have a pain somewhere in your physical body, just go for that love within you and focus on that love. Breathe in that love into that place that is paining you and you'll be amazed to see the effect it has on your, on your physical body. The late Catholic mystic, Father Anthony de Mello, maintained that spirituality really means waking up. So we started by saying, I'm alive, alert, awake, aware, happy, healthy, and enthusiastic. To experience God, you have to be awake. De Mello writes, and I quote, most people, even though they don't know it, are asleep. They are born asleep. They live asleep. They marry in their sleep. They breed children in their sleep. They die in their sleep without ever waking up. They never understand the loveliness and the beauty of this thing we call human existence. You know, all mystics, Catholic, Christian, non-Christian, no matter what their theology, no matter what their religion, are unanimous on one thing. And that one thing is that all is well. All is well, friends. Though everything appears to be a mess, all is well. Let's say it. All is well. Strange paradox, to be sure, De Mello says. But tragically, tragically, most people never get to see that all is well because they are asleep and they are having a nightmare. Unquote. De Mello gives the amusing story about a gentleman who knocks on his son's door. Jaime, he says, wake up. I don't want to get, get up, Papa. The father shouts, get up, you have to go to school. Jaime says, I don't want to go to school. Why not, asks the father. Um, three reasons. Uh, he whines. First, because it's so dull. Second, the kids tease me, Papa. And third, I hate school, I hate school, I hate school. The father says, well, I'm going to give you three reasons why you must go to school. First, because it is your duty. Second, you are 45 years old. And third, you are the headmaster. You have to wake up. Get up. 
our founding minister of our center, Reverend Elmer Lumsden, used to say that life is a school and we are not on holiday. But many of us won't wake up, get up, and participate in our life lessons. As Jamela puts it, these people die in their sleep without experiencing the exhilaration, the beauty, and yes, the challenges, because there are challenges, but those challenges in the game of life result in triumphs and success when we play the game full out. In the Science of Mind textbook, Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our great teaching, writes a meditation, the last line of which echoes this call for us to wake up. He writes, and I quote, I awake from the dream and re-enter the house of my Lord clothed with peace and robed with colors of light. I awake from the dream and re-enter the house of my Lord clothed with peace and robed with colors of light. You know, friends, we have to wake up from the dream and accept the truth of our spiritual magnificence, full participating in creating the world we want for ourselves, the world we want for our children, the world we want for our children's children. Our TMI provides us with an opportunity to do this and to find fulfillment, meaning, and satisfaction while doing it. The first step that we have to take on this journey of awakening is to participate believing in God with your whole heart. We have to recognize that the whole self of you is God, not part, not just aspects of you, but all of you. God, the living spirit almighty, full dissipates as you, as your entire life, as your home life, your work life, your hobbies and interests, as your sex life, as every aspect of your being. It's all God and it is all good. Practitioner Steve Golding, whose prayers gush from his heart in rhymed couplets and sometimes find expression in the compelling rhythms of Jamaica's reggae music, just shared a new composition which he calls Solid Spirit, which beautifully expresses this. Let's listen to it. Strange it is that the unseen is 
When we are rooted in spirit and we are working on our spiritual self-reliance and participating in the, the game of life, we learn to commune regularly with that God presence because we are rooted in spirit. And we have a vision for ourselves because we realize that we always go where our vision is. I want to repeat that. You always go where your vision is. Have you ever been driving and you spot a pothole in the distance and you think to yourself, damn pothole. Uh, and before you know it, you're, you're, you're dropping the pothole. Has it ever happened to you? It's because you are paying attention to the pothole. And it has happened to me over and over and I think, what a strange thing. I saw it as I was approaching. So how come the, the tire dropped in it? It's because that's where my attention was wholeheartedly. So we need to watch where we put our attention um, because it's, it's, it's really a truism. We go where we're looking. Which brings me to your assignment. Now regulars at the Temple of Light, even those at Calabash who will listen to this talk later, must do this assignment. Your assignment for this week is to write a vision for yourself. Now it's not a big, don't, it, uh, don't panic and don't think this is a big assignment. It's very simple. Just let your vision for yourself be one of abundance, of right action, of divine guidance, of inspiration, of blessings in your life. I mean, just simple as that. You might word it something like, my vision for myself as God's beloved is one of abundant prosperity, joyous service, vibrant good health, life-enhancing relationships, fulfilling work, and so on. You, you know, but write it. Some, when you write something down, there's something, something happens because you've committed it to black and white. And there's a neurological link between writing and writing, R-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. So your vision will be what you are mentally looking at and what you are giving your attention to from moment to moment this week. week. And it doesn't really matter what you write. What is important is that you begin to strengthen your spiritual muscles by strengthening your belief in yourself, in the true God self that you are. Make up your mind right here and now to be fully present and active, alive, awake, aware, happy, healthy, and enthusiastic in your life, and to participate in your spiritual community. In the words of wisdom on page seven of your program, Dr. Carol Kahn's writes, and I quote, in the end, it is how we are in the world that reflects our deepest beliefs, unquote. And she concludes by reminding us, and I quote, new thought spirituality is a teaching, not a preaching. It gives us new information about our personal capacity for love and joy, for peace and self-determination, for prosperity and vitality. It shows us a way of living that can awaken us to the freedom that comes from authentic self-expression. It is the esoteric core of religion, the golden nugget that is buried within the vault of dogma. It is what the ancients knew and what was suppressed. It is what can make this a world that works for everyone. 
It is the truth that sets us free. End of that quote. And I'd like to add, it is the thrust and the core of our thriving ministry initiative. Set your intention to be alive, awake, aware, and here on Saturday morning as together we work to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence. Thank you, my friends, for being here this morning. I want to be fully awake so that I, so that I can experience the beautiful consciousness you bring to the spiritual community. <laughs> Namaste. Rooted in spirit.